YouTube channel. Thank you for joining me today on this video, which is slightly different to anything that I've done before. So today is a bit more of a sit down video, my first sit down video on this YouTube video where, I, on this YouTube channel, where I'm just sitting down and discussing something. So if this isn't the type of thing you want to watch, then click off because there's no point listening to however long I ramble on for if you're not interested in the subject of how I became a blogger and what I do day to day. Um, I, re I really want to go into depth with this video and make it a bit more maybe like a podcast so you can just sit and listen to it if that is your interest or you're just interested in the industry in general. By the way, this um, outfit will be in the description box below so um, you can find it on there. But anyway, let's go back to the video. I thought I'd give you a bit of background information before um, I kind of started. So if you don't know me or you're new to the channel, um, my name is Lydia Tomlinson. Um, I've been blogging now for three years, almost three years. I live kind of between Manchester and Liverpool at the moment, um, but I call myself a Manchester-based blogger, which actually is quite a good tip. If you live close to a city, use that as a bit of a, a tag for where you are. So I think being a Manchester-based blogger has actually helped me get a lot of work because a lot of companies will search for that hashtag um, Manchester bloggers or whatever and I use that hashtag regularly um, and I think a lot of companies want specific like geolocations for um, work that they're doing and they want to target a specific area so if you are close to a city any city um, use that as your um, like a selling point. I think with London it's a bit different because the market's so saturated down there and probably in any capital city but I think having a bit of a niche like Manchester or no matter what city you're in in the world um, has really helped me gain um, work and also probably gain a following as well because if I'm out and about in Manchester people come up to me sometimes and say hello so I think um, people like to follow people in their area. So yeah, that's where I live. Um, I just live in kind of countryside at the moment. I do want to li live in Manchester at some point, just for probably a time being, for a couple of years, just to sort of see city life. Um, so that's kind of something I aim to do in future. But for now, countryside it is, and I kind of visit Manchester probably two to three times a week anyway. So I am 23 years old, and as I say, I started about three years ago blogging. I've got an Instagram following of um, about 72,000 at this time um, and YouTube is quite new to me so I've got about 10,500 followers on here. Um, so don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new to the channel and enjoy the video and also go and follow me on Instagram. My handle is at Lydia Jane Tomlinson. So yeah, those are my platforms. So I by no means class myself as an expert at all. I am still learning every single day but I just wanted to share where I've got up to in my career so far, how I've got here, um, what I've done to get to this position. Um, I'm a full-time fashion blogger, influencer, YouTuber, um, fashion and lifestyle, I guess. Um, so I just wanted to share my tips and I asked um, a week or so ago on Instagram what people wanted to see in terms of video content and a few people said this. Um, so I think it might be quite helpful. Already been rambling on for five minutes now. So the first thing I want to do is explain my career with the five W's. So who, what, where, why, when? Yeah, those are the five W's. Okay, so let's start with when. I've already said it's three years ago um, coming up for in April, I think. I think that was roughly the first time I started my blog. And at the time I was a student in uni. I think it was in my second year. Um, I graduated, not not this year, the year before. Um, it was my second year of uni when I started a blog. Um, I was living at home. I didn't live at uni. I tried that experience Basically I started doing a French degree, um, I did that for half a year, dropped out and restarted the following year doing an English degree and, I, and during the French degree I was living in halls, absolutely hated it. So I was living at home, um, doing my degree, oh, and I also had a part time job, I was working with adults with additional needs, I was doing quite a lot of admin work there um, and different things like that so completely separate to blogging but um, I got there because because my dad works there and I've just been volunteering, I'd been volunteering for a while, I'd done bits of work there so I ended up getting a full time, not full time, but um, a job there. Which I was doing in the interim between 
um, leaving my French degree and the English degree and then I continued that until April this year. So I was there working part time, I had a degree to do but I just kind of felt like it wasn't really enough which is why I started my blog. So this brings me on to the why section. So I started a blog for a few different reasons and I, I'm going to call it blogging at this stage because I was purely just blogging and Instagramming but I was very much blogging. So I started in the April of 2016, 2016 um, and I was literally just taking pictures um, round and about. My mum and dad were helping me. We'd go down to like local places and find backgrounds. I bought myself an Olympus pen, EPL7, because at the time it was kind of the trend camera to have. So I went with that, done my research. Um, so I bought my Olympus pen, um, did loads of pictures with my parents and I started a really basic blog and when I say basic I mean it was basic. It was just like a free one I think, I think it was free or it was really like minimal cost a month um, just to see if I liked it because I didn't want to start investing money into something that I first of all no idea about, second of all um, I just didn't even know whether I'd like it or not. So I didn't want to invest money, so I started that way and then eventually, I'd say probably six months after that, I decided to get a proper blog where it looked more professional. I really researched it, a friend was helping me like because she did a bit of graphic design and web setup, so she was helping me a little bit. I did so much research though, it was so hard to start a blog I didn't realise because I am not very technical at all I didn't know anything about stuff like that I mean my degree was in English so it was in no way related and I didn't really know anybody apart from this one girl who was helping me I didn't really know anybody who did anything like that so it was so difficult to set up but I set up this new blog later in that year where I really went for it I think I was putting up three blogs a week or something which is crazy now because blogging has kind of come secondary if not kind of at the bottom of the chain for me I've not put out a blog post for a long time um, which is something I want to try and get back on this year yeah so I was putting out three blog posts a week um, just to gain work experience I suppose so I was at uni and I knew I wanted a job in let's get back to the why bit I knew I wanted a job in fashion or journalism I've known this for a long time and when I say a long time, I think I must have been about seven, six or seven. I don't know, really early, like really young when I kind of started getting a real interest in fashion. I used to love playing with brats and Barbie dolls. Um, and then I used to kind of do my own designs, draw my own designs and make scrapbooks, cutting out all my mum's magazines. And I just knew that was something I wanted to do. And that's why, one of the reasons why I started it. I also had been doing work experience in terms of sending off articles to um, different magazines, local magazines. I was sending loads off because I used to love to write. This is when, I think I started that about 14. <coughs> and I had all that um, pressure of like, you hear about people and they're like, they've got a career and they're about 17 or something. So at that point I was thinking, right, I need to get my act together. Let's start doing some work experience. So I was sending articles off. Um, and then when I was a bit older, I'd say I was about 18 um i got an internship at a luxury fashion magazine in manchester and i was writing for their online magazine which was really good and that really helped me um start my blog because i saw kind of behind the scenes of wordpress and things like that and i loved writing for them and i think that's kind of i think shortly after that i think i started that in the summer and then shortly after that i started the blog like the following early spring because I was doing that and realised I didn't have much creative control um, over the writing and I, I knew like I had more to offer than just whatever was set on that day and I just kind of had this like urge to get it out there somehow and so blogging just sort of like fell into that and obviously fashion and creativity fell onto the other side which I'm still struggling with in terms of photography and things like that. that and te the technical side of things. That's always been um, my sort of um, down, not downfall, but something I've struggled with more um, 
like the outfits and style I can put together but the technical side of things a bit difficult. Anyway, this is why I started a blog. Let's get back to topic. I'm really diverting here but I want to try and give as much information as possible just to help you really. Like if you are in this position of starting a blog or wanting to go there in terms of YouTube or Instagram, um, hopefully this is going to be interesting. And I still think like Obviously the market's very saturated, but if you really want something, you can go and get it. And I think this about myself, like I struggle day to day with feeling not good enough and like I could be doing more, but looking back from where I was, I've really achieved what I wanted to, to do. I'm full time in this job, I'm doing a job I absolutely love. Um, so if you really set your mind to it, yes, you can do it. And yeah, the mar market is saturated, but if you've got something and you've got drive and determination, you can get there. And also things change so rapidly in this industry. So if you can catch on to something that's new, you've got a real selling point there. So that's why I decided to start a blog. I keep checking my notes in case I've forgotten anything, but that is why I've started my um, blog and why I began it in the first place two main reasons. Um, I wanted to work experience in writing and journalism and to showcase that and also like a creative outlet. I know everybody says that but I just love fashion and style and that was perfect way to do it. And looking back I'm, I think why didn't I do this sooner because that is so perfect for me. It's literally my dream and what I've always wanted to do but not quite been able to pinpoint it because the job didn't exist when I was younger. Why didn't I start it sooner? But I think everything happens at the right time for you. And perhaps if I'd started it sooner, it wouldn't have worked out. So that is the why. So I've kind of touched on this, but I want to do what. So what I did to um, get going and started on this blogging influencer journey. So as I mentioned, I was started out taking pictures with my parents. Really lucky that my parents um, would do that for me. We'd go out on weekends and I'd do like different outfit changes. Um, so I was really lucky in the fact that they helped me. But if not, you know, friends, anything, like if you've got some good friends um, and they're willing to help you, you know, you say, oh, we'll go out, I'll buy you a coffee. Can you take a few outfit pictures for me? Um, and do it like that or find friends, um, find people on Instagram who are similar in a similar area and position to you and meet up and get each other's content. I think that's so beneficial and I do that now. So I started getting these pictures, set up a basic blog which developed into something more. And my main thing is that I did my research. So, I mean, I can't tell you how many YouTube videos, uh, blog posts, articles I've read online, all for free doesn't cost anything to um, like learn how to start because you can easily access all this information for free. Um, so I did so much research and still to this day that is my absolute main thing that I do is research and I can do that. I can just sit and watch a video in the evening or just take some a couple of hours out in the day. I'll do it at the weekend and because I'm interested in it, it doesn't really feel like I'm doing work but researching just even just watching two youtube videos and they might be 15 minutes long each and you pick up one thing from each of them but it's invaluable and i've learned pretty much everything about the industry from that and continue to do so so that's what i did i did lots of research and just got going and kind of monitored trends um i still do this now see trends on instagram i go on you know just follow trends in general um, just to see what's happening, um, to keep up. I think that sometimes can get you down, but that is something that is crucial just to research, research, research. So I've already mentioned this, but it's the where. So where I was in my life at the time I started and where I am now. So um, I was still living at home as I am now. I'm living at home with my parents. Um, so it, it's not the same financial pressure which takes a huge weight off it. At the beginning, I invested a lot of money into cameras and tripods and different things like that. I mean, nowadays you can just shoot on your phone. Um, so that is easy enough and it's pretty cheap as long as you've got your phone already. I was at uni, like I mentioned, but living at home. So I had my student loan, which I actually kind of invested fashion pieces in. So I remember 
um, buying my first Gucci bag <laughs> with my student loan. Which somebody's sensible mind would say that's absolutely ridiculous, why would you do that? But for me, things like that are such an investment. I never regret the money of it and I'd rather put my money into that, which kind of is beneficial for my career and job um, and something that I love rather than going out and spending it, wasting it on student accommodation, some crummy flat. Um, spending it on alcohol. I didn't really go out that much at the time. Um, so I put that student loan back into my job in, in many ways and bought a camera, etc., and laptop, stuff like that. So that's where I was at the time. Now I am living at home still. As I mentioned, I do want to move out at some point um, and have a flat in Manchester, etc. But I'm trying to work out a few logistics and when is right for that. Um, so at the moment I'm just happy to do what as I'm doing um, I'm saving up a lot of money because I want to invest that into future whether that be um, flat deposits mortgage etc so I'm putting that aside as I'm living at home um, and saving up that way so that's where I am in life at the moment and from that point of starting to now I've just built myself up from there. I've really been relentless in it. Um, I was, as I say, I was chucking out three blog posts a week at one point, but trends have changed. People don't read blogs as much. Um, and I've kind of started my YouTube channel, which has been a huge focus the past, I'd say six months, maybe just a little bit less. And then Instagram as well is a massive focus because there is so much to do on Instagram. There's stories, Instagram TV, Instagram posts in general and just keeping on top of that all the time. So next I want to explain what happened when I started gaining a following. So in terms of working with brands, I started getting gifts probably when I was about 5,000 followers or something and I remember some of my first gifts were I got some stationery which I was like over the moon about because I was getting free stationery which was just mind blowing to me because I love stationery. Um, and obviously had to post about it. And uh, in the early stages then, people expected an Instagram post from you for a gift, which it doesn't really work like that as much now. Um, a lot of brands expect it, but they're not gonna get it. So um, yeah, started off with gifts. And then my very first paid collaboration was with Henry London, which I still work with to this day. So I think that was probably when I had about seven, 7,000? I don't know, somewhere around that mark, which was I think the winter after I began, um, like the following January, February, something like that, and I probably did a few Instagram posts for them. Um, so yeah, that was an amazing opportunity, and it just started from there, really. Like, it was very sporadic, so maybe a month or so later I'd get um, another collab, and so, so it happened like that. Obviously, it started off small in payments. I think I was charging between 50 to 100 pounds a post or like for a bundle of posts. Um, Instagram stories didn't exist then, so you couldn't include that. So yeah, I started off small and it was infrequent, but I was getting there and I was getting some money and that kind of gives you a bit of a drive and determination. And something I actually want to address is it's so frustrating to me when other bloggers say, don't do this to get the money. Obviously in any job, you're not gonna want to put so much effort and um, passion into it if you're not gonna get a reward back from it because what's the point? Well, there is a point. I mean, like it's fun and enjoyable and that's one side of things, but to say, oh, don't do it to get money, I just think it's kind of a bit of an old fashioned idea and. If you're business minded and want to make this into a career in a business, there is absolutely nothing wrong with you wanting to make money from this. Obviously, like there's no point starting if you don't enjoy it and you, you are literally going out to get money because it doesn't really work like that, but no job works like that as such. I mean, some do, but you know what I mean? Like, do it because you enjoy it, learn from it as a hobby, but if you're passionate about it and want to make money, you go girl, like there's nothing nothing stopping you and I just want to kind of kill that idea that people say don't go out and make money from like don't seek money from blogging because if you want to do it it's it's an amazing career in marketing and huge opportunities that are so incredible and like bring so much to your life why not 
seek money and um, a job from it. So once I'd finished uni, I was getting in a few paid collabs and I went part time with my job because I had this thing on the side, this blogging thing. It wasn't making lots of money, but it was making some, and I knew what the industry had to offer in terms of making this into a career. I went part-time with my job. Fortunately, I was able to do that because I was living at home, and I put all my efforts into um, blogging and making this a thing. So I did that um, for, I'd say, so I graduated in the like June, of 2017 um, and then last year in 2018 I left my job in round about April so I was doing that for a while a good few months um, probably coming up for a year because when I finished uni it was earlier than June so I did that for a while really putting my efforts into blogging because I knew I wanted to make something of it my other job at the time I really just wasn't enjoying it, it wasn't fulfilling, it was just a part-time job and at the company I was offered um, several different roles which were room for progression, good decent wage, good salary, stable job, nine to five, um, with people that I liked and doing something that I quite enjoyed um, and I turned that down because I knew I had this on the side and this could be something so much bigger. And as it turns out, best decision I have ever made. It was a risk, I suppose. Wasn't as much of a risk because I was living at home and that has really probably been one of the biggest benefits to me that I was living at home, didn't have lots of bills to pay for. Um, so it enabled me to do what I wanted. But yeah, taking that risk and not having a nine to five steady job like my friends were getting, I knew every, everybody I know like from my area it's a small village it's not something where people are doing what I'm doing um, it's just not a thing um, everybody goes and gets a nine-to-five job and you know they're progressing the career or whatever um, but nobody just not many people kind of do this kind of thing I took that risk and it really paid off so now I want to talk about where I'm up to now what a day in the life or a week in the life looks like for me, how I do it and just a bit more about my career as it stands in general. So there are two sides to things I suppose, sort of the admin, technical, um, more office based side and then the creative, um, fashion, lifestyle side of things. Um, and then they just merge together to make the job. So the admin side of things are probably things that you wouldn't even think of. like. Luckily, because I did admin in my previous job, um, I learned a lot about um, invoicing, invoicing systems, which obviously not got a clue about before I, ha I did that job. Um, so I kind of copied the model that we used at the company on my own. Um, I forgot to mention as well, I actually registered as self-employed, was it 20... It would have been summer 2017 um, when I was making a bit of money. Um, I registered as self-employed then because I really wanted to take it seriously and get myself into it in that way and register and make sure I was doing everything officially and properly. Luckily, my grandma and granddad have a farm and they have an accountant. So um, I they got me in touch with their accountant and she helps me um, sort everything out because I don't really have a clue about um, accountancy or bookkeeping or anything like that but luckily we've done a bit of this invoicing at my old job so I followed that system um, of my invoicing I still follow that system to this day I need to keep track of everything that's going out and coming in basically so going out I have an expenditure spreadsheet so I include most things on there that relate to my job travel expenses phone expenses um, even holidays sometimes um, Outfits can be on there. I know a friend who um, expenses her outfits because it's part of her job and without that she wouldn't be able to do it. Um, travel expenses, holidays, because you basically get so much content when you're on holiday. Holiday for me is, um, whilst it's enjoyable, it's also work. Um, so I expense pretty much 
well as much as I can really and I have a whole spreadsheet for that and then incomings so I've got to send invoices out to companies then they'll pay us whatever amount into my bank account and then I track that on a system and keep all my invoicing on spreadsheets which is able to be sent to the accountant when it comes to paying tax. I also need to make sure I put enough money aside whenever I pay myself which I make sure I do monthly and um, I put 20% away for tax just so it's you know there and it, it can be taken away so that's kind of like the financial side of admin things then there's also keeping up on top of constant emails i mean you're you're getting emails in your inbox even at the weekends um keeping up on top of dms things like that like um people contacting you and, and communication so that's another th side of things and then there's things like um video editing how to edit videos keeping on top of um, how to edit your photos in different ways and trying out new things all the time. I suppose that falls on the creative side a bit. Um, things like memory cards, tripods, all these different things that can benefit your career, like music subscriptions for videos, all different technical side of things that I do pretty much on a day-to-day -day basis. So yeah, I think the most important thing with that is to keep really organised, so I try and keep on top of that two times a week maybe, if not more. Well, emails is constant, but like, um, invoicing systems and things like that and I always print out contracts that's another thing so when we work with um, a brand uh, we'll get a contract through that we have to read through that's probably it can be anything up to from two pages to ten pages of a contract which a lot of the time includes like legal things that um, you need to know just loads of different things, exactly what you're um, expected to do, et cetera, et cetera, guidelines. So you've got to read through contracts, sign them. I always print them off so I know exactly what I'm doing and then I can easily take them in and out of my system when I've finished a contract. Um, I take it out of my filing system and put it into an old contract file. So I've got all my kind of live contracts in one file. So that's another thing that I've got to do on the admin side of things. And then the creative side of things. So that is planning outfits, styling outfits for YouTube, for Instagram, um, things like different stories. I know probably th people think it's quite easy, but to plan like Instagram stories um, that like are interesting and people want to see and you, you being relevant and funny and engaging whilst also showing new products um, in new different ways and different formats of filming your Instagram stories, everything like that and keeping up with posting regularly and swipe ups and things like that, it can get quite exhausting. Sorry, the delivery men just came with my new desk so I kind of lost train of thought but basically I was saying at the weekends it's most active when you just want a rest people are most active on Instagram so that means you've got to keep up with that um, and keep up with posting and then another creative aspect is getting the picture itself so finding a good location what kind of style of location you like um, the outfit that goes with that um, and yeah I'm trying not to be too disciplined about that at the moment because I kind of recognise that people just like to see a good outfit and if they like the outfit that picture will perform well and people will enjoy the picture. Um, kind of regardless of background or location but you know it's always nice to have a lovely background um, but I'm trying not to worry too much because it's, it's impossible to always be in a gorgeous place. Yeah that's another aspect, of, creative aspect of things and then obviously like video editing and finding out like what really works and I try and, well I want to try and try and get some different content and like things like different angles and styles and ways of filming and editing so that's another aspect of the creative thing like side of things that I do day to day. I also asked on Instagram um, what people wanted to see in this video and I've got a few questions that I might actually answer um, in a minute but um, one of the things is what do I do with gifting, um, how do I like deal with the gifting that comes in if I don't want something or whatever. Basically, I don't really accept anything that I don't want. Well, I just don't, full stop. I'll never accept a gift if I'm like, mm, it's all right. Um, because first of all, it's a waste. Second of all, I don't want the pressure of having to post it. And third of all, it's space because I don't have an, an unlimited amount of space. Um, I have this wardrobe behind me, which is a walk-in wardrobe, but that is 
full to the brim, let me tell you. Um, and then I've got this rail, which I keep like new in things on. I've got a couple of cupboards and drawers, but honestly, everything is so full to the brim. A lot of things gifting I do give away, or if it's been a while and I've worn it, I'll maybe sell it on Depop. Um, if you just search Lydia Tomlinson on Depop, that is my um, like handle. I kind of deal with gifting that way. And I think in 2019, I want to make it a thing that I don't accept gifting as much because um, there is just so much stuff that c can come your way, um, which is an amazing lucky thing, but also something that you have to try and keep up with and on top of. So I don't want to just keep accepting gifting unless it's you know something that's really gonna benefit my life. Let's also touch upon um, how I get paid, how I go about this, the different ways in which I get paid um, and things like that. So the main way I get paid is through a collaboration and a promotion, usually on Instagram, sometimes, I'm, actually I say usually on Instagram, at the moment it's been YouTube as well, YouTube, Instagram and then blogging as well. So a brand usually approaches me um, and they'll say, would you like to take part in this collaboration? We've got um, we've got such and such a thing we want to cover and promote. Would you like to do it? What are your rates? Usually a brand will come uh, to you saying what are your rates rather than saying this is our budget because they're hoping you go below their budget, obviously. That's business for you. Usually I go back and say, okay, so my rates for this amount of content is this. There may be a bit of back and forth and negotiation between how much content I can do and what they expect, etc. or they accept straight away and it's easy peasy and all fine. Um, and when that negotiation or whatever is done, um, they'll usually send over a contract, um, which I have to sign, which I mentioned before, and they have to sign as well to agree to payment and you agree to doing the work. So that is the contract. I print the contract out and schedule it in my planner of when to shoot and when to post, etc. And then usually a brand will ask for um, to see, oh, before that, I actually forgot to mention on Instagram and YouTube, they'll often ask to see your insights and your statistics. So it helps to have a business account on Instagram if you can. So then after that, they'll probably expect to see your um, post before it goes live. So that um, requires you sending it off. I use WeTransfer to um, upload everything onto and then send it off, um, which is just an easy way of sending links and creating boards to send to um, a company. And then they'll approve your content. Not really, I mean, I've had probably about once or twice um, them come back and say, we would like you to do it in a different way. Um, but usually they just approve the content if you followed the guidelines. Um, and then you are ready to post and also they'll want to approve your captions and things like that. So, um, and then maybe give you a tracked swipe up link so they can track your sales on Instagram or YouTube. You will post a picture, then you will send an invoice off to them. There are lots of invoice templates online, um, but on my invoice, I'll include my logo, I'll include my address, their address, my purchase order number, not purchase order, invoice number, because I have everything numbered. Invoice number, dates, what um, I did, the deliverables, um, the amount, and then my bank details for payment. Usually you'll get paid within 30 days. I mean, a lot of the times you do. Um, and then and then that's it. And then I'll pay myself at the end of the month, whatever I've earned that month. Um, and then deduct tax and whatever. That's how I get paid. And somebody asked how I know whether like a paid collaboration is legit or not. If they've contacted me via email, how do I know? So this is a tricky one, absolutely. But a lot of the times I work like with an agency. So there's agencies that brands hire to um, find influencers and stuff like that. So if you go through an agency, you're absolutely fine. I don't have my own agent. Um, I don't really need one. Um, I'd rather monitor everything myself and negotiate myself and see everything firsthand rather than having my own agent. Yeah, an agent is in like um, an outside agent that just contacts you and you work through them rather than directly the brand. So if they contact you like that, that's absolutely fine. You know that's legit. A lot of the times I'll ask for either half payment or full payment up front if I've never heard of the brand or if it's a like less familiar brand because there is that worry of doing a lot of work and putting a lot of time and effort into um, and then not getting paid. I know some friends um, that has happened to. If it's a big company, I mean, you're pretty assured that they will pay on time. 
if it's a bit, you know, like Starbucks or something, I've worked with Starbucks in the past, um, you'll know that their systems will be very like strategic and in place. With a smaller brand or something you're not familiar with, I'd um, recommend saying, um, can you do half payment up front or full payment up front? And if they seem a bit sketchy about that, I think you'd know not to work with them then. Or even you can just tell straight away from the email the way they've worded it. This is why grammar and spelling and um, you know things like that really come in handy because if you get a dodgy sounding email you're not going to reply are you? So um, if something comes in like that I just don't even bother replying sometimes because there's just no point I'm never going to work with them. So I think that's how you decipher um, who's legit and who's not. Also wanted to sort of going off payments wanted to talk about the advantages and disadvantages because although I've probably made it sound absolutely amazing and every day is like a walk in the park um yeah obviously I work hard but it's not all it's not all amazing it's not all great there are disadvantages one major thing i struggle with is like worry and anxiety about the job so one i'm not doing enough Two, um, I could be better, why am I not better? Three, what happens if this industry all just falls apart and it's not there anymore? So I guess the thing to say, I always tell myself and my mum tells myself, my mum tells me, is cross that bridge when it comes to it. That's not happening right now and it probably won't. Um, and if it does cross that bridge at that time, things happen all the time in different jobs and deal with that park that and deal with it when when and if it ever happens. I think I'm really lucky in that my parents and my boyfriend both like keep me quite level headed and um, if ever I'm in a moment of panic or anxiety um, they're there to put some perspective on it and tell me you know look how far you've come you're doing great at the moment there's nothing bad happening none of these worries are happening right now and if they do happen deal with it but it won't you'll be fine and I think something that stems that worry and another disadvantage I'd say for me is loneliness and um I work by myself pretty much all the time I'll meet Freya or some other bloggers and well we go to an event and that could be maybe two times a week three maximum and then obviously just like day to day um like during the nine to five or whatever I'll just be alone which you know has its downsides is I mean I'm really productive alone and I, I'm um, motivated alone so it's not in terms of work it's just more in terms of how I personally feel you know it's not all roses sometimes I just get really into my head and get really worried about things and anxious and um, working myself up about things because you are like on your own and, and it is quite a lonely environment and um, so I think one thing to combat that is make sure you see your friends as much as you can in the evenings and boyfriends or whatever and um, make sure you've got things planned at the weekend but other than that there's nothing really that can completely take away from that um, it is part of the job and it's just one tiny well I'd say it's not it's not tiny it's one factor of the job um, that has its downsides but every single job has a downside still work at the end of the day and if it has a little downfall like um, you're a bit lonely I mean it's just it's just life isn't it and for me the um, pros completely outweigh those cons so the pros get to work whenever I want do the job that I absolutely love like everything about this job I love fashion style you get to be your own boss manage your own time you can just nip out whenever you want you're not restricted to certain hours and also I think one of the main things for me is that there's so much room for growth and that's one thing being in self-employed or having your own business your mind is so much more open the the point is it it depends how much work I put into it as to how much reward I get out of it and I love that idea I love the idea of the more I put in, the more I get out of this and I'm really motivated by that and it makes me want to do it. So those are the advantages I think of this job. It's amazing and yeah, I love it and I wouldn't be doing anything else and I hope I don't do anything other 
anything else. That brings me on to another question somebody asked, which is, um, how, uh, what are my future goals? So for me, my future goal at the moment, short term, as in like the next few years, is to just grow with what I'm, with what I'm doing, produce better content all the time, to grow as in figures and numbers. I want more people to see what I'm doing and hopefully get inspired by that um, and just do bigger and better of what I'm doing now. I'd say I'm really business minded and like have that drive to achieve more and my own success. So um, hopefully like, the more I do, the more I get out of it. So I'm just gonna answer a few questions that I've not actually touched on, um, ones that I got on Instagram. Something that somebody has asked me, what's the best thing about being a YouTuber? I think I've pretty much explained that, but YouTube specifically, I think the idea of getting things across and getting your personality across in a video is so valuable because before with in just Instagram, you couldn't really do that. And I think people are a bit, not taken in but a bit um, under an illusion with somebody but with um, YouTube you can see like personality and it's much more three-dimensional. I've always been somebody who's been really into watching like fashion videos that you know Vogue makes. I've always watched fashion TV um, but like always been into that for a while since probably YouTube was like getting started so now I feel like I can make those videos myself and it's so much more creative freedom as well so that's what I love about YouTube and it's the best thing I've done for a long time is start YouTube. How do you reach out to brands um, you want to work with, is there a sample letter, um, I feel like she's wanted to write more but it's not been able to fit on, is there a sample letter or email you use, I presume she wants to say. So um, how do I reach out to brands? A lot of the time I don't but I used to in the early days and I did that by firstly getting contacts from other friends um, or finding their email online, finding their um, Instagram accounts, different Instagram accounts. If you want to work with a jewellery brand and you see a jewellery brand you love, message them on Instagram. I've always said, like, if you're somebody, like, if you've got control, like, like this job, if you send out 100 emails a day, you're gonna get more work back than if you just sent out one email a day. So just keep messaging, keep Instagramming people, keep finding their contacts on their um, website and just keep going on like that. Have a look at your favorite bloggers, who have they worked with, how do you get in touch with their brand? Instagram, message them on Instagram, um, see if they'll maybe even start off with gifting if you've not got a huge following. And then, you know, as you grow, they may, might want to work with you and they'll recognize that. So I think that's one way to reach out to brands. I think like a template that I'd use is, hello, my name is, um, I am a Manchester-based fashion and influence, fashion and lifestyle influencer. Um, then I'll tell them my stats. I'll also attach a media kit. Media kits aren't something like that I think are necessary. Basically on my media kit, I've got Instagram statistics, insights, my kind of, kind of put my rates on there and a bit more about my blog and Instagram, etc. A media kit is quite good just to put some extra information about you, not necessary. If you've got a business account, attach your insights, um, that's really useful. So say your name, attach your insights, why you stand out is quite a good one. So what you do that's different if you've got a selling point, maybe say a favourite piece of your of, of their collection that either you've got or that you really love and you think would fit really well into your style and just, you know, be really friendly. Just go to them with genuine interest um, and detail about you and say, um, if you'd like to know more, I'd really um, love to collaborate. Um, let me know if you want to know more. Really looking forward to hearing back to you. Best wishes, Lydia, whatever. And I've got a little email signature with my logo in, which I think is quite important because it looks a bit more professional. Do you earn much from vlogging? Which is quite an interesting question because vlogging, not as such, but YouTube, um, I am actually earning from now, which is great. So I do earn more from YouTube in terms of what they pay for per video as opposed to per Instagram post. I think in general um, that that follows the rule because a lot more goes into a video basically. And also I can sometimes get a lot more views on YouTube despite having um, a smaller subscriber count than, than Instagram, sometimes get more views. So do I make much from vlog from YouTube? I guess so, I, I wouldn't, at the moment, because I'm still in the early days, I wouldn't say that tops Instagram because I get more work through Instagram. But yeah, definitely you can earn a decent amount 
with my subscriber um, account. So somebody's asked, which kind of follows on for the last one, how do you ask for payment for from brands when you reached out to them in the first place? So I would say if you're at a position where you think you can ask for payment, do everything I said in the last one, um, as in attach your stats etc why you love the brand just say i'd really be interested in creating some sponsored content for you please let me know either if you've got a budget or if you've got any collaborations coming up because a lot of um brands um or pr agencies will have like collaborations that they know are going to come up in the future and they need to find influencers for so you're kind of doing their job for them by going to them. Just say, have you got any um, sponsored content or future collaborations lined up, future sponsored collaborations lined up, and that's how I'd approach it. I like your style, sense of style, ideas and passion. It seems to come naturally for you. Was it always like this? Or is it, why can't I see like, um, I presume she means, was it always like this? Or have you just like found it recently or found it during vlogging? So um, sense of style, ideas and passion. I feel like I've always had them all like, my style, I've always been very much know what I like. Um, and if I don't like something, I definitely don't like it. So I've always been quite, um, like I've always had my own vision um, and ideas, I guess she's the same. Ideas in terms of what I do for work, don't always come that easily to me. It's like having writer's block. Sometimes you just don't feel creative or you, you can't think of anything to do. And I'll just get inspiration through like, Instagram or looking at other people's YouTubes and something might spark an idea something of anything really it can be somebody like I see in the street and they'll just spark an idea for an Instagram picture or a video or something in terms of ideas you've just got to like ebb and flow and just remember that you'll get back to what you were if you're not feeling that creative or whatever and she's also put passion and um, passion definitely as I explained before like I've always been into fashion passionately like I've always known that's what I've wanted to do so I feel like that passion has always been there and when I get my mind on something that I'm gonna do I'll pretty much do it all those things have always always been in me and I'm glad I've found something that I can project that onto was what you did beforehand in any way related did you go to uni if so was it worth it or related so for me um no it wasn't related in any way nothing I've done in the past has been any really any way related apart from GCSE textiles um, but for me English is something that I really was um, like had a strong um, love of and I love books and reading and I've always loved writing and that has definitely come into what I'm doing now and I think as well that's quite a creative subject it's very um, got a lot of free thinkers in it and um, I think it's something that's kind of lent itself to what I'm doing now, whether that be the style of writing I've done or like I've chosen a lot of times to write in like a satirical way. And I think my English degree has probably helped me in that in some way. I'd also say in terms of time for me. So during that time, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just knew I wanted to do a degree in a subject that I loved and a subject that I thought, um, would be a general subject that's considered um, like a, a respected subject uh, no matter what job I went for because at that time I still wasn't sure so it bought me time in that I started blogging during uni and, fortun and I was fortunate enough to have that time so I think it definitely did help and also if anything happens to this career I've got an English degree from a good university and that's a subject that can help me pretty much in anything and I think a lot of kind of PR journalism probably look for a background in something like that so no it's not directly related but I definitely think there is some benefits to what I did and especially if I ever change my mind and career. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If there's something I've not covered, leave it in the comments below or message me on Instagram. Um, I, I like to think I've given a very broad, I mean, this video is probably gonna be long, but I like to think I've given quite a broad, broad spectrum into not only what I do on a day to day, but how I got there and why I got there. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm gonna stop rambling now because my throat hurts and I have been talking enough. So thank you for watching and I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram. Thank you.